21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Uh, wait a minute, just a second. Burglars where? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is that, an apartment house? Oh. Yeah? You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. No, you stay right there. We'll send the officers over. That's right. They'll be there right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. At 10.20 p.m., I was out on patrol of the precinct in sector car number three. I had given instructions to the operator, patrolman Coley, to return to the station house. And we were driving south on Lexington Avenue in that direction. So they pulled the curb, Captain. Yeah? I got out and I walked over the car. He was behind the wheel and she was sitting there next to him with her arms folded. Mm -hmm. I said, you went through the light. He said, I know I did, officer. My mind was on something else. Looked at her when he said it. I said, let's see your registration and operator's license. Then I went to the curb and I wrote out the summons. Uh-huh. Well, I came back, I give him the summons, and she turns to him, and you know what she says? She says, well, there goes your Father's Day present. <laughs> How do you like that? Wait a minute. Huh? Let's go, Coley. Yes, sir. We're liable to be the first ones on the scene. Hold the siren. Maybe they're still in there. Yes, sir. Okay. Go on. Take your left. It's a break, Captain. The street looks clear. All right. Go through the light. Give them the horn. Right. Okay, you're clear. Got it. Come on, move, taxi. Nose in the middle of the street. You know the building? 372, I know it. Cross 2nd Avenue and pull up right in front of it. Yes, sir. And hold the horn going across. Captain, somebody come running this way. Yeah, there he goes. Into the bar and grill there. All right, pull him. I'll check him out. You go on to the scene. Yes, sir. Nice to have you in here. Where do it be? Where's the fellow that just walked in? What's the matter? Where is he? I think he went in the booth back there. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Is he the one that just came in the door? Yeah. What's the trouble, Captain? Look, I don't want any trouble in here. You won't have any trouble. I'd like to know what the trouble is. You. Did you just come in here? No, no, I've been in here for a little while. Why are you so out of breath? Who's out of breath? I'm not out of breath. How long you been in here? About 15 minutes. Yeah, about. Then where's your drink? I don't know. Service is slow, I guess. What's your name? Bogner. Jack Bogner. How do you spell it? B-O-G-N-O-R. Come on. Stand up a minute. Why? Come on. Stand up. What's the idea? What's it I'm supposed to have done? Well, I don't know that you've done anything. And what's the idea? Lean up against the booth there. Why? Go on. Yeah? Oh, listen, what's the idea? What are you looking for? You won't find anything. No? What are you going to do with these? Oh, I just happen to have them. That's a new one. 
You just happen to have six thirty-two caliber cartridges. I did. Listen, Captain, is there anything I can do? Yeah, just get behind the bar. I don't want any trouble in the place. When did this fellow come in? Just walked in the door a second before you, that's all. Just a second before me? Yeah, a second or two. All right. Get behind the bar and see that those other people stay back. All right. I don't want any trouble in here. I don't know that guy from Adam. So, 15 minutes you've been in here, is that right, Jack? Uh, more or less. Mostly less, I think. All right, mostly less. Where's the gun these go in? I don't have a gun. You searched me, didn't you? Where do you live, Jack? 3422 Curtis Avenue. Where's that, Brooklyn? Yeah, Brooklyn. Well, what are you doing way over here? I came over to meet a friend. Well, where is he? Well, it's not a he, it was a she. I, I don't know, she left. Is that it, Jack? What? Under there. Under the table. What is it? What do you think it is? What would a gun be doing under there? I think somebody would have to put it there, don't you? That beats me. Bartender, come here. It's not mine. I never saw it before. Oh, didn't you? Yes, Captain. What can I do you? Reach under that booth and get that gun, will you? What gun? If we're crying out loud. Just pick it up and give it to him. Yes, sir. Is that his? Well, it's not yours, is it? No, sir. It's not mine, either. It wasn't there before you came in. Uh, back here, Coley. Who said it wasn't? Can you prove it? I know it wasn't there. They were in there working on the safe, all right, Captain. That's what set off the alarm. Oh, the see. lady was sitting on the stoop across the street. She saw three of them come out the front door. They split up when they hit the sidewalk. Two of them ran toward First Avenue and one this way. This, uh... One, I guess. Not me. I didn't run any place. Lieutenant King was on patrol. He responded to the call. I told him you came into the bar after a man. He's outside talking to a detective about tracing out the other two. Said he'd be right in. Okay, good. Listen, Captain, you're not going to make a whole big thing out of this, are you? It's a place of business. Uh, you better get behind the bar. I just don't want to get a bad name in the neighborhood. Like I said, I don't know this guy from Adam. I never saw him before. Who'd patronize a joint like this? Listen, you. All right, all right. Get behind the bar. Bring the cops down on you and then get tough. You resent it. Who were the two that were with you, Jack? With me? Where? Breaking into the safe there. I didn't break into any safe. Well, and what were you doing in the building? I wasn't in any building. The lady saw you come out. You and two other guys. I wasn't in any building. Hello, Captain. Hello, Matt. Hello, Mr. King. Cully. Well, I think this is one of them, Matt. No. You ran in here and took a booth. Ran in right before I did. According to the bartender, that is. Said he's been here 15 minutes. I have been, more or less... A revolver was under the seat there, and uh, these in his pocket. Looks like you're in trouble, mister. What kind of trouble am I in? Sitting in a bar. Who were the two that tried to rip that safe with you? What safe? I don't know anything about any safe. Well, we know all about safes. You come to the station house with us. We'll teach you a few things. The suspect, Jack Bogner, was taken to the station house, and as the arresting officer, I accompanied him to the office of the 21st Detective Squad on the second floor. There, under the questioning of myself, Lieutenant King, and other detectives, he continued to deny knowledge of the attempted safe burglary. By telephone, the name Jack Bogner was checked out through the Bureau of Criminal Identification. BCI reported a Jack Bogner listed in the resident known criminal file showing three arrests for burglary and one conviction on the charge of unlawful entry. The suspect admitted he was this Jack Bogner. Two detectives of the Safe Loft and Truck Squad, specialists in this type of crime, arrived to aid in the investigation. While the interrogation of the suspect continued, at midnight I went downstairs to the muster room to turn out the platoon for the 12 to 8 tour. Then, after I spoke to the desk officer in regard to a patrol problem he faced, I walked through the back room towards the stairs leading to the detective squad. As I started up, I could see Lieutenant King standing at the top of the stairs talking to a rather heavy set woman of about 50. I told you, I don't know whether I could or not. Hello, Matt. Captain, this is Mrs. Turo, Captain Kennelly. Mrs. Turo? Oh, how do you do? Mrs. Turo was sitting on the stoop of her house across the street from the loft building. Yeah, it was hot. She saw no. the three men run out. She saw two go toward First Avenue, the only one toward Second. Well, I want you to understand that when the policeman first talked to me, I told him I didn't know whether I could or not. Yes, I understand that. After all, it was across the street, and it was night, and I wasn't paying any particular attention. I just saw the three men come out of the building. I thought to myself, that's funny. Anyone should come out of the building when it was so dark in there. At that time of night, I mean. They're getting a little line upset, Captain. Oh, good. As far as recognizing any of them is concerned, I don't know whether I could. I don't think I could. But you might be able to. Well, yeah, of course I might be able to. 
How can I tell till I try? Well, we're going to give you the opportunity to try, Mr. Turo. Oh, well, I appreciate that. As long as you don't expect me to do the impossible. Well, anything you're able to do will be a help to us. If you can identify one of the men, that'll help us. If you can tell us positively that none of them or any of the men you saw come out of the building, that'll be a help to us, too. Oh. All we want is your assistance, to the best of your ability. Uh-huh. Well, that I'll be glad to do. Look on. Yes. We're all set for the lineup in there. Okay. Now, Mr. Toro, we're going into the detective squad. Oh, yeah. When we get in, you'll see several men lined up across the room. Mm -hmm. They'll all be about the same age and height and build. Well, what do I do? We'll go inside. I'll tell you then. Oh, all right. Okay. All right, straighten up there. Stand in line. <laughs> all right, Mr. Turrell. I want you to go and look at each one of these men standing there. Look them all over good. Look at them twice if you have to. If you recognize any of them as one of the men that came out of the loft building, you stop and tap him on the shoulder. Oh, just uh, tap him on the shoulder. Yeah, that's right. What do you want? Well, where do you want me to start? Start wherever you like. All right, hold oh, on. Wherever I like. Yes. Captain Kennelly. Yeah? The desk officer wants you to call him when you get a chance. All right, thanks. Okay, Mr. Stroll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just walk down the line, huh? Yes, that's right. Just walk down the line, look at each one. All right. Uh, can I take another look at them? Yes, if you want. All right. Oh, uh, one of them had on a sports shirt, something like this one. Well, you got a million of them on 34th Street, lady. All right, just keep quiet in line. You recognize any of the men, Mrs. Turo? Uh, no. I'm afraid it was just too far away. Just too far. I, I was across the street and I didn't notice particularly. The only thing is one of them had on a sports shirt, something like this man. Send the sports shirt to Sing Sing. All right. <laughs> Well, Mr. Turrell? Uh, I'm sorry. That's all right. All we want is the truth. You can't, you can't. All right, break it up. Okay, you fellas, get over there. You want me to have an officer take you home, Mr. Turrell? Oh, no, no, that's all right. It's kind of late. No, no, it's all right. I'm so nervous, I think I'd rather walk than ride anyway. I wouldn't be able to sleep. It's too hot. All right, thank you. We'll call you if we need you. Uh, it's too bad I didn't get a better look. Yes, it is. Uh, well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Well, that blows that sky high, Captain. Yeah. I thought if she only gave us a tentative identification, Jack could figure he might be hooked and help us. Yeah, no such luck. But we still got the gun charge against him. I don't know how good that's going to be. Yes, it would be better if he'd had the gun in his pocket and the bullets on the floor. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. The men who stamp into your house just laugh when you ask for their warrant. As they go about their dirty job, pulling out your desk drawers, looking through your private papers, shoving your family into another room for interrogation, you plead with them to tell you what it's all about. But it's no use. Even when they don't find whatever it is they're looking for, they drag you down to headquarters for more questioning. There's nothing you can do about it. The law is on their side. Well, in some countries, that could actually happen today, but not in ours. There's a very old and a very good law against it. The law is on the side of the people. It's in our Constitution, in Article 4 of our Bill of Rights. Listen to the words. They're 165 years old, but they're mighty important to us today. They say, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall be issued but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. As long as those words stand, 
You and your family are protected against black-booted feet tramping through your house in the dark of night without a warrant. It is part of our Bill of Rights. It is one of our freedoms. Now, back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. As the arresting officer of the burglary suspect and the best witness against him, I followed the prescribed routine. After the detectives had finished their interrogation and he was fingerprinted, at 3.20 a.m., I took Jack Bogner downstairs to the muster room where he was booked by the desk officer on charges of third-degree burglary and Section 1897 penal law. The station house attendant, Patrolman Bailey, then lodged him in a cell for the balance of the night. I completed some paperwork that remained to be done and then lay down on the couch in my office until 7.30. I had some coffee and shaved, then at 8, turned out the platoon for the day tour. Shortly thereafter, with the assistance of Detective Dan Goldman, assigned by Lieutenant King, the suspect was put in a patrol wagon and we drove to police headquarters, 240 Center Street, where he was photographed and appeared in the citywide lineup with other felony suspects arrested during the night. Following the lineup, Detective Goldman and I went with the prisoner further downtown to 100 Center Street, New York County Criminal Courts Building. There, in Felony Court, one of the magistrate's courts of the city of New York, all adult persons arrested for major crimes in the borough of Manhattan are given their first hearing. Jack Bogner, Jack Bogner to the bar, complainant Captain Frank Kennelly. Present. I'm here. Jack Bogner, you're charged with violation of Section 1897 of the penal law and that you had in your possession one loaded revolver. Also, you're charged with burglary. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Do you want to be heard now, or do you want an adjournment to obtain counsel witnesses? Isn't the defendant represented by counsel? They tried to get my lawyer, Your Honor. They couldn't reach him. They tried twice. He's in Atlantic City. Does the district attorney have any suggestions? I think we ought to have an adjournment until Monday, Your Honor. Should be able to have counsel available by then. Oh, now, Your Honor, it's not fair to make me lay in jail over the weekend like that. I'm ready to make bail. My bondsman's here. I could reach him. Mm, I'm inclined to agree that it isn't fair to the defendant. The district attorney's office isn't willing to proceed until the defendant is apprised by counsel of his rights, Your Honor. I know my rights. The court will take responsibility for the rights of the defendant. Go ahead, Mr. District Attorney, on the application for bail. Yes, Your Honor. A few minutes before 11.30 last night, Your Honor, the police department received a report from Holmes that the burglar alarm was ringing at Sunningdale Upholstery Company on the third floor of a loft building at 372 East 82nd Street. In response to the call, as Captain Kennelly will testify if you wish, officers found the shipping platform door had been jimmied and an entrance made. Burglars started to work on the safe. That tripped the burglar alarm. The burglars abandoned their tools and left in a hurry. A witness across the street saw three men run out of the building and separate. In the meantime, Captain Kennelly was proceeding to the scene in response to the call. He saw this man, Jack Bogner, running in a direction away from the building into a bar and grill on 2nd Avenue. Captain Kennelly alighted from his car, went into the bar and grill, and questioned this defendant. This was on the floor under his seat, Your Honor. A thirty-two caliber Smith & Wesson fully loaded. It wasn't mine, Your Honor. I don't know anything about the gun. A half dozen more cartridges, thirty-two caliber, were found in his pocket. That's substantial proof, Your Honor. Bail of $10,000 on each charge is requested. Did the defendant admit to the burglary? He denies it, Your Honor. Has he been identified, or do you have any other proof? Not at this time, Your Honor. Bail is set at $2,500 on each charge. Returnable for hearing uh, when? Wednesday at 10 a.m., Your Honor. Hearing next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Can you arrange to be represented by counsel then? Yes, sir. I'll have him here. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks a lot. All right, Bogner. Let's go. Yeah. When Captain Oliver went Captain to the bar. Well, see you Wednesday, Captain. Oh, uh, just a second, officer. Listen, I want to make Bond get out of here. How long do you think you're going to stay out? What do you mean? Jack, you know it and I know it. You were ripping that safe last night when the bug hit. Well, you prove it. Hello, Captain. Oh, what are you doing here, man? I was over at the lineup. I came down to see how things went. I can tell you, Lieutenant. Not so good for your side. We still got that gun charge against you, Jack. Well, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. We'll make it stick. We'll make it stick hard. We'll see. Gun was on the floor. Conviction will put you away for a good long time. Who are the other two guys, Jack? Look, what do you want from me? Come on, let's go make my bond. Let me get out of here. My bondsman is waiting. You ought to make it easy on yourself, Jack. Why take it all alone? I'm not taking anything. You get tapped for the gun law with a previous conviction. That's plenty. Well, we can talk about it some other time. You better talk about it now. Listen, give me a break, will you? Don't bother me. If you nail me inside the place, nail me clean, then I'd say, okay, you got me. I'd take what you're dishing out. But you, you missed. That's what you think. 
We didn't miss. Fair as fair layoff, would you? You deserve the break, Jack. Maybe you'd get it. Why don't you tell me about the safe job and who was with you? Look, you ought to play it smart. That gun deal could go either way. Oh, what do you think I am? If I made a statement, that'd put me into the burglary. That's another felony. I'm looking one in the face already, so what, what difference does it make? We can work it out. Maybe we can reduce it to unlawful entry for you. That's no felony. Who are the other two guys, Jack? And the gun beef goes out the window? I said we'd work it out. Maybe you've got an idea. I know I have. Let's get you signed out of here and take a ride uptown. In the police business, like any other business, it's both permissible and customary to give a little in order to get a lot. And the lot Lieutenant King wanted was the rest of the safecracker gang. Lieutenant King waited in the clerk's office while Jack Bogner completed arrangements to be released on bail. I reported to the police lieutenant who maintains a desk at felony court to record in a special blotter the arrival and departure of all police officers. Then I went downstairs and got the subway to go home. I was not due back on the job until 8 o'clock the following morning. I arrived at the station house at approximately 7.30, signed the blotter, and went directly to my office to change into uniform. Come in. Can I see you a minute, Captain? Yeah, sure. Come in, man. Well, how are you doing with the safe burglars? That's what I want to see about, Captain. Yeah? Not doing much good at all. Well, I thought you had Jack convinced. Mm, so did I. Oh, excuse me a minute. Yes. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Who? Oh, well... Yeah. Yes, all right, Sergeant. I'll talk to him. Yes, Mrs. Hedgley. No, no, there's no way we can keep the trucks from going through that street. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Hedgley, but it's a public street and they're entitled to use it. They what? Yeah, well, I can't make any promises, but I'll look into the matter. Oh, yes, I will. I'll look into it. Yes, sir. Thank you for calling it to our attention, Miss Hedgley. Yes, that's all right. Never mind. Her husband gave a thousand dollars to the police athletic league last year. Now she wants us to keep the trucks off her street. Huh. I uh, I thought that Jack was ready to open up, man. Well, he didn't. He got released on bail, and we drove back up here. He'd started to change his mind before we even got down to the car. By the time I got him to the station house, he said he'd take his chances with the gun deal. Why? I think he's afraid of those two guys he was with. Uh, it's a pretty thin case against him. The gun was on the floor. Only the cartridges were in his pocket. Mm. Either he knows that or he's really afraid. Where is he now, do you know? I don't know, but I'm sure the safe and loft squad does. While he was up here talking to me, they sent two men to put him under surveillance when he left. Imagine they're keeping their eye on him. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Captain Larkin down there about Jack and the others. He said that job they tried at the upholstery company gives them an idea that these are the boys who've been causing a lot of trouble lately. Thinks they're right for about five or six safe jobs in the last month or six weeks. Oh, well, it could be. Well, what do you want me to do about it, man? Well, I don't know exactly, Captain. It's your case. Gun charge, anyway. Just wanted to get you up to date on what's happened. Well, thanks. <laughs> don't know what there is to thank me about, sir. You're welcome, anyway. I worked the rest of the tour without hearing any more from Lieutenant King regarding the safe burglars. At 6 p.m., I signed the blotter and went off duty until the following afternoon when I reported for my night tour. Lieutenant King told me that the surveillance of Jack Bogner had borne fruit. Detectives who had been following him for three days finally observed him make contact with two other known safe burglars, apparently his companions in the previous crime. The detectives were watching when the three of them looked over a plumbing supply house on East 76th Street, also in the 21st Precinct. The place was to be planted that night by detectives of both Safe and Loft Squad and the 21st Squad. At 10.30 p.m., Lieutenant King came to my office and told me that the burglars had been observed breaking into the building. They were now at work on the safe. He drove to the scene while I made arrangements to get the required uniformed officers there. Then a sector car came by the house to drive me there. Pull by the place and stop at the corner. Yes, the Captain. All right, let's go. Yes, sir. 
Captain. Yeah? Lieutenant King is over in the doorway of that shoe repair shop. Everything okay, Sergeant? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Yes, sir. Coley, come on. Come on, Captain. They got in through the freight dock. I think the detectives want to go in the same way. All right. Hello, man. Captain. Well, how's it look? They're in there. They're working on the safe. Are you set? Yes, sir. Got the block covered in the building. How about our men, Sergeant? They've all got their instructions, sir. Good. All right, let's go. We'll go in the freight entrance. There's a shipping room there, then a stock room, then the office. That's where they are. Watch it going up the freight dock. No talking. Okay. Go on. Come on, come on. Okay, let's go. That door there. Brother, quiet. All right, it's set. There's a light back there. That's them. Let's take them. Okay. Okay, let's get him open the door. All right, police officer, raise up. Get him up, all of you. Watch him. Get out of Shoot. Okay, let's go. Open it up. Okay, open it up, all right. All right, stand up. Yeah. Yeah, we're standing. Don't shoot. Get those hands in the air. Put your lights on them. Okay. All right, let's go. Keep them up. Watch him. Watch him now. Get that other one over there. Yes, sir, we got him. We got him. I think Wally's dead. I think he is. You're lucky you're not, Jack. All right, get against the wall there. Yeah, I'm against there. Very lucky. Didn't you have enough trouble, Jack? Did you have to go into this thing again? Well, I needed money. I needed to pay the bondsman. Needed to get a lawyer. Would have been better off if you helped us. I'll help you now. I'll give you all the help you want. What do you want to know? You're a little bit late, Jack. It just happens that right now we don't need any help. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. Well, how long has it been since you've seen him? Yeah. You're sure he didn't move out? Well, who told you that, lady? Yeah. Yeah, sure we'll make an, inv- an investigation. Well, and so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.